Three key moments simplifying planning laws to build more houses. Let's have a listen. My ministers will get Britain building, including through planning reform, as they seek to accelerate the delivery of high quality infrastructure and housing. They will also pursue sustainable growth by encouraging investment in industry, skills and new technologies. Well, there it is. Um, it sounds, Isabel, that they're just going to essentially uh, usurp any uh, local concerns and just start building stuff. Is that more or less as we should see this? Well, I mean, up to a point, I rather hope so, because local concerns, uh, important as they are, that we don't concrete over our lovely, loveliest parts of Britain with very bad developments. The trouble about local concerns is that there are an awful lot of people up and down this country who don't have very much to do, it seems, and object to literally everything. I have so much personal experience of this on both a very, very small scale with minor, minor uh, planning applications just to put in, you know, the odd window or hut, uh, and then right up until bigger planning applications involving quite a lot of houses. And basically, there is a band of people in this country who will simply object on principle yeah. to any change. And that is what this new Labour government is trying to overcome. And I think most people agree, almost everyone agrees, that we do need more housing. Um, and it is simply naive to think that it can all be on grubby land on the edge of cities. It ought to be distributed more evenly. And I'm afraid that's going to mean that there is going to be housing on the outskirts of villages. The question is, what kind of housing is that going to be? And the government is saying that that is where they will allow locals to have some say. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right about the, <clears throat> the whether it's it's not even NIMBYism. It's just people, as you rightly say, Isabel, who seem to have a bit more, too much time on their hands. I was talking to a fellow near me who is almost losing his mind because a yeah. petition of 30 people have got together in the village to complain and object to his desire to put a dropped curb in. Not a building, a dropped curb outside his house so he can park his car away from the road so his child doesn't get run over when they park up to, to get, go back into the house. And interesting, the person that's headed up the petition is a man who's had count them eight extensions over the last 30 years on his own house but of course that doesn't matter the drop curb is the evil so it's a mentality that we are we all understand that you've got to try and penetrate and if Keir Starmer's government can tackle that then I think we'd all sort of support that wouldn't we I mean I think there needs to be a support group for those of us who have been on the sharp end of these absolutely pathetic local campaigns over things like dropped curbs Yes. I know somebody who basically ended up selling a beautiful property because locals wouldn't let her put a gate in it so she could actually access it with a lawnmower. <laughs> you know, these people are utterly insane. They are unhinged. They have lost all sense of perspective. They are in their own little sitting room, squirrelling away, examining you know this or that heritage report to try to block each and every change and it's wrong it's got to stop it is holding back our country and I do think that is one positive thing that may come out of today's King's speech this new government does appear determined to take it on uh, but there was so much else wasn't there in the King's speech today and a lot of it really controversial some of it I think is properly concerning you know their attempts to interfere with the rental market I think yeah. will have a very counterproductive intent. I can see what they're trying to do, trying to give tenants lots more rights versus landlords. It's well intentioned. But you try telling landlords, the average owner of a private rented property, that they can't discriminate against tenants who are on benefits or would be tenants who are on benefits or have children. I don't personally think that's right. You know, if you own a property... You can put whoever might, you want in it, surely. It's up to you whether you allow children yeah, yeah. to be part of the mix, whether you actually want people who are Correct. existing off benefits in that property. I simply fundamentally disagree with that, and I think it will have a very negative effect on the rental market. Indeed. I do a bit of work with the landlord and rental sector, and I speak to people on an ongoing basis, Isabel, on this point, and it, I think it comes from Labour's sort of innate belief that, and this is perhaps where we begin to expose some of the true colours maybe of who we now have in power, their 
absolute intrinsic belief that landlords are pirates, they are thieves, they are horrible people, they don't care whether the guttering is hanging off, whether your roof's falling in, give me the money, we'll keep putting up the rent. This kind of a world where you would never get away with stereotyping any other group for fear of going to jail. For some reason, the landlord um, profession is a, an open goal. And th I think that's the place where they come from, and that's why they feel quite relaxed about imposing ridiculous no-fault eviction laws, which, you know, again, we understand what the, the spirit of it is, but the manifestation is that somebody you don't want living in your house because you want to live there yourself could stay there for another year. Yes, or, or more. I mean, it really is going to make you think twice. If there's a borderline case, you know, perhaps you're lucky enough to have one or more properties that aren't fully used all the time. And you're thinking, well, actually, maybe I should open those up to, yeah. you know, six month rental or a year's rental um, for which maybe I'll get a little bit of income, although doubtless I'll be taxed ruinously on it. But you then are going to make a calculation. Well, I might want to sell that property in a year's time and I'm not going to be able to get the tenant out. So I think that this, again, is going to have a very negative impact. Unfortunately, a minority of bad and scurrilous landlords have given the entire industry sure. uh, and a name that it doesn't deserve. And of course, that plays directly into the hands of interfering big state left leaning yeah. governments. Spot on. Let's move to another part of the King's Speech, crime and justice, the scourge of our streets set to become a thing of the past, apparently. That's good news, right? With Labour giving police new powers to stop antisocial behaviour. Legisl legislation will be brought forward to strengthen community policing, give the police greater powers to deal with antisocial behaviour and strengthen support for victims. Measures will be introduced to improve the safety and security of public venues and help keep the British public safe from terrorism. Uh, so there it is. I mean, the last time I looked, Isabel, keeping the public safe from terrorism is actually kind of already baked into the brief of being the government of the day. But I feel I've kind of heard those words or a variant of those words almost every year since Margaret Thatcher was knocking around. Yeah, I mean, do you remember Blair, Tony Blair's government and his ASBOs? Well, today we've got a new equivalent. They're called respect orders, and they can apparently be issued to adults uh, to curb antisocial behaviour. I mean, I think we have a real antisocial behaviour problem in this country, and it starts at the lowest level, the kind of behaviour I see each and every day, pretty much, on trains and tubes where people think it's appropriate to listen to their loud uh, iPhone videos in front of everyone else. They yep. seem to think that no one else is in that space. That's antisocial behaviour at the lowest level. So is roaring through town centres in motorbikes and cars that have been adapted to make as much noise as possible. Again, low level stuff. Uh, but that needs to be tackled because it soon becomes bigger level stuff. There are a few things that were announced today that I think we can, um, our listeners, will probably be encouraged by. For example, they are supposedly going to drop the ludicrous £200 threshold under which shoplifting, uh, the value of goods of under £200 is not uh, pursued. That was obviously a daft thing to ever announce because it's just going to encourage an absolute explosion of shoplifting of, of so-called low value goods. So if they stop that, that's great. Um, respect orders, well, if that helps, then I'm all in favour of that. But what we need is a more uh, visible presence and robust presence of police on the streets. And you hear that time and again yeah. from communities which are troubled by, you know, young men loitering around at night in an intimidating fashion, not clearly there for any good purpose. All of this, it's low level stuff. It matters to communities, though. Indeed. Um, let's move then to an area that I know you have talked a lot about and written a lot about, Isabel. Border security, asylum and immigration. Despite stories saying that Labour were going to water down its stance on immigration, the King announced a bill to tackle organised criminal gangs sending migrants to Britain. Have a listen. My government will seek to strengthen the border and make streets safer. A bill will be introduced to modernise the asylum and immigration system, establishing a new border security command 
and delivering enhanced counter-terror powers to tackle organised immigration crime. There it is, Isabel. Uh, look, you and I have spoken many, many times on television and radio about the ineptitude of the government, the, the, the lack of any real bite in what they've uh, supposedly intended to do. I'm thinking channel crossing and all that goes with it. And yet all along, what we didn't realise, what you and I didn't realise, Isabel, was that Keir Starmer had the answer all the time. It was just waiting to be said. How silly of us not to spot that Labour are going to solve this crisis. I mean, to give Labour their due, the Tories have left such a complete and utter mess. The abuse of the system is absolutely systematic and on a scale I don't think many of us have any appreciation of. I'm just back from spending a couple of days in Boston and Lincolnshire and what has happened to that town which i've written about in today's telegraph and which a bunch of pearl clutching liberal lefties are going nuts about what has happened to that town yeah. with uncontrolled legal and illegal you're talking about boston here right I, I read that piece just earlier today isabel it is, it is truly shocking and what i saw there were so many vested interests actually helping migrants exploit our benefit system. This goes from top to bottom, from the channel crossings, which, as we know, have continued to pace under Labour. To be fair, they haven't exactly had long to stop them, but 1,200 people already. I have no confidence they are going to smash the gangs with any of this. And some of what was announced today, uh, they're talking about increasing penalties for the suppliers of the machinery needed to get across the channel, the boats, the dinghies, the yeah. life jackets and so on. Well, good luck with that. We can't even police our own country. You're going to be prosecuting Chinese manufacturers of rubber dinghies? Give me a break. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Some poor fella on the Belgian coast who happens to sell life jackets and, you know, therefore he's going to be pro find himself in jail because Keir Starmer said so. I mean, this is just a, a nonsense. That ain't going to happen. We will watch with interest what does manifest in terms of their uh, their desire, they say, to get it under control. But I'm, I'm not hopeful at all on that.